So welcome back to another stream. In this one, we are going to be fixing a small bug that we have been having since the beginning of our website. Um, so this error animation down here is, as you can see, it's hidden because the way that Safari calculates the viewport height, and this is not only for Safari, this probably applies to mobile all mobile browsers on Android as well. So if you have several tabs open at the top, the viewport is calculated when the address bar at the top is hidden like this one. But if you just bring the address bar back, then, all of your components that are supposed to be inside that 100% viewport height will be hidden. Okay, so how do we fix this? So fortunately, someone has written a very nice article about this. Thanks, Luis. Um, so we will be using what he does, he does in here, but I don't want to change the behavior that we have on our desktop site, and I don't have other devices to test, so I'm specifically going to tailor this experience to the iPad that I have in here. So I'm going to check for the user agents, and if the user is coming from an iPad, then we're going to run some JavaScript to calculate the new window height, and if, if the user is not on an iPad, then we're just going to go business as usual. Okay. So what do we do to achieve that behavior? Well, um, one thing that we can do is to change the landing component to have a um, resize listener, right? Anyway, before we talk about how we're gonna achieve all of these things, let's take a look at this JavaScript piece that um, Luis has written for us. It grabs the window.inner height and then assigns that property to a CSS variable. I didn't know these things existed until I started researching about this topic, so, CSS variables are a thing. So it turns out you can assign stuff in, uh, into a CSS variable and you can use it in your SAS file. Anyway, so what, this is what we're gonna be doing today. But before we copy this, I want to add an event listener to our landing component in here. Um, I think the navigation bar component is a good place to look at. So we have this scroll event listening listener in here and we're gonna do pretty much the same thing, but we're gonna change it to listen to the resize event rather than the scroll one. Um, resize. And we only want to do this on an iPad. So we have a file called constant utils, something like that. Um, where is it? Constant, yep, here. So this checks if the window user agent is an iPad or an iPhone, or if it's an iOS, which um, is both um, iPad and iPhone. But anyway, we are going to be specifically tailoring this experience to an iPad. So I'm just going to um, copy this flag in here, and I'm gonna say if if it's an iPad, then, then do these things. And if it's not an iPad, then we don't care. Let's import this constants okay let's clean this file up okay so so instead of this we have to put this into curly brackets and we have to run this code if the if the user agent is an ipad basically so we have to do this if ipad then okay so that ensures that we add and remove the scroll listener only on an ipad okay so what, do, what else do we need? We, we need a function to set the window height, right? So I'm gonna write that function in here. So constant handle resize. Um, and this thing is going to, well, this thing is pretty much going to deal with the resize events. So let me put that in here. So each time the, each time the window is resized, this function is going to run. And what's this function going to have? This is when we come back to this JavaScript and try to understand what it does. So let me just copy it and drag it over here. Um, and this sets a property called vh to window dot inner height times well one percent of the one percent of the window inner height. Well, since we're always setting it to one hundred percent, we can get rid of this, and I can say I can replace this with inner window height um, and then I can call this inner window height as well okay and this should be a constant actually all right that looks good now we can use this in our CSS so the way he uses it in CSS is this I'm gonna explain what this does. Let me just copy and drag it over. Actually, I'll put 
it in the next line because he had a very valuable comment there. Okay, so what does this do? So this grabs a variable called inner... Hmm, I don't like this name. Inner window height doesn't make sense. Let's rename this to um, window inner height. Okay, that's better. So let me just copy this and paste it in here. So this this thing looks for a variable called window, window inner height. And if it's set, then it will grab that value. If it's not set, and then it will default back to this value. And the default value should be 100 viewport height if, if this variable is not set. Okay, so this should work. Um, let me set this to 10, 10 viewport height for now, just to test if this variable is being set. So let's go to our desktop site. Yep, as you can see, the min height kicks in. And on an iPad, also let's get rid of the min height so we can see the effects on an iPad. So this should complete the, yep, this is a broken experience now. Let's see the iPad. Okay, so this is how the iPad looks. Okay, the iPad is broken as well, as expected. Now let's set these values to expected, the expected ones and Okay, so this runs after resize event. Okay, we also want to run the same thing when the component is mounted. So we want to trigger a redraw, or actually we want to set this property. Um, hmm. We want to run this function twice. We want to run this function after the, after the resize event, and also we want to run this function before a resize event when uh, our component is drawing for the first time. So this handle, okay, as you can see, it works great. And there's another problem now. So if I change the inner height of the viewport area, um, you can see that this area just glitches, like it changes the size because when the address bar and the tabs are hidden in Safari, like these things, when they are hidden, um, Safari changes the inner window height and that triggers a resize and then resize event changes the height of our website. But fortunately, there's another fix for that one. Someone thought about um, using um, window width to fix this issue. So there is, so what we can do is check the window width. If the window width hasn't changed, we don't have to, trigger this resize event basically. So in this handle resize function that we have in here, we're gonna define another constant. Well, this is going to be a variable actually. Let uh, window width, window inner width. This is going to be zero at the beginning. And this handle resize function is going to do something like this. Okay, looks good. We can get rid of this comment now. So what do we do in here? Current window inner hit, current window inner width is current value. Then we compare it with the previous one, or if it's not set, then we run this function. Okay, that should work. So the desktop behavior shouldn't have changed. And let's refresh on an iPad. This should work now. Yeah. As you can see, we managed to fix the issue on the iPad. And if I just open, well, can I? Let's resize the window. As you can see, it still functions quite fine. Um, on the medium version, it's okay as well. If you close this window, let's close this down. Come on, can I not? Okay, so when you close it, it still functions the same. And yeah. So this is what we do on an iPad now, cool. And if I rotate the screen around, it still works as expected. Well, actually, it works better than I expected. Okay, this is it. And let's check the desktop behavior and let's see if that has changed or not. Oh. So this is not working as intended now because we are setting this variable at the beginning. So to fix this, what do we need to do? Oh, okay, so we need to run this function on an iPad only. So all of these things will go, so we need to call this function if it's an iPad. So if iPad, and we call this function. 
Okay, so if you resize the desktop site now, it should keep the previous behavior, which it does. Okay, and on an iPad, it still works as expected. Great. Well, this is it. Um, and in the next stream, I'm going to talk about one more thing, the throttle and the debounce events. So stay tuned for those ones. If Apple ever adds Windows to an iPad in the future, that will be quite useful, but I don't think Apple will add Windows in the new, onto the iPad in the near future. But anyway, that's it. And I hope you learned something new. Um, and that's how you use viewport. That's how you do viewport height calculations on an iPad, basically. So yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.